Hey, it's Big V here and we're talking teams today. Matter of fact, we're talking about should team leaders and businesses only focus on money-making activities? Well, the answer is it depends. You see, as a salesperson, and I love sales, I've always had the personality that whatever problem I have, I can always sell my way out of it. Does this sound familiar? You see, entrepreneurs and salespeople love the concept of being on commission. It doesn't matter if I was selling hot tubs at the state fair, if I needed to cover a $10,000 booth cost, all I had to do was sell 10 hot tubs. And I got up every day to the fair and I would go in and I would make sure that we sold another hot tub. If there's 10 days in the fair, we sell one a day, we're doing good on the days we sold 10, those days were phenomenal. Selling satellite dishes was the same way. I remember getting in real estate and working the open houses at the new construction sites and thinking to myself, okay, what are my bills this month? How many do I have to sell in order to pay them? And I would go out and do exactly what I needed to do just to pay my bills. That mentality of working to sell based on what I need to make to pay my bills is a little bit just backwards. So let me tell you why. As you become a team leader, you have a, a role. Your role is to create stability and security for the team people, for the team members that you lead. Without stability and security, what happens is, is you have unrest. People become anxious and have anxiety and wonder if they're gonna be next. So the goal of the team leader is not just to focus on money-making activities. Yes, we can sell our way out of a lot of problems, but also to be fiscally smart, which means we have to look at the dollars. We have to look at where every dollar goes and we have to have some level of what I like to call financial intelligence. Now, as a business owner, I remember going from each level of business, you know, at $500,000 a year in income, I remember having a certain set of problems. My accounting was able to be handled by my spouse. I had a banker that was, you know, generally okay. But when we went from a $500,000 business in sales to maybe a million dollars, the system started to change. We had to have more elaborate accounting with QuickBooks Online that would go to our accountant that could go in and look at where we were. I wanted to start knowing what my cash flow was going to be. Now, cash flow management isn't the smartest thing to do, but it's the way that we ran our business. As we went to the next level, and at each level, we realized that all of the systems that we were currently running had to be broken and rebuilt to allow us to scale to the next level. I remember being on a phone one night with my coach, who was a financial coach as well as a business coach, and he said to me, he said, Verl, I know your problem. I was describing him some of my financial stresses, trying to figure out where I was and whether or not I had enough money and to pay taxes and all of those things. And I said, well, I'm glad you know what the problem is. Do you mind sharing it with me? And he says, yeah, I'll tell you what it is. The body has outgrown the head. Now, what, what, is that a compliment? I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute. If the body has outgrown the head, you're meaning that I don't have the ability to run a business this size. And he says, that's exactly what I'm saying. So you have two choices is what he told me. And I remember this as if it was yesterday. He said, your first choice is you can take your foot off the gas and you can stop growing, or you can bring in talent and people that have experience running businesses at the level you're going to and let them help guide you through the pitfalls of things that are gonna happen forward. And that was game changing for me because I hired my first fractional CFO. And my fractional CFO came in and started asking questions that I didn't even know existed. I didn't know I should be asking about my profit and loss each month, each week. I didn't know that I should have a cash flow statement that shows me where I am and what my lowest point would be during the week. I didn't know that I should be anticipating big bills and expenses that are coming up. And with clarity on the finances, what happened is my financial intelligence began to grow. And as it began to grow, it began to become really clear to me that I needed to focus on other things besides just going out there and making more money. Yeah, I can sell pretty well, but when you're running a business, the more complex the business gets, your responsibility as a leader is to make sure that you do what? Create stability and security for the people that you lead. The only way that I've learned to be able to create that stability and security is to what I call save for a rainy day. And so our rule of thumb in business, and you can see this in everything we do today, is that we want to always have six months of operating capital in savings. So if our money stopped coming in tomorrow, there's always six months of revenue or cash sitting in the bank that we could go in and pay for our payroll to make sure that we keep our lights on, to make sure all of our expenses get paid. Now, I can't imagine a time where I'm ever gonna have six months of no revenue coming in, 
but we're prepared for it. And being prepared and having that six months of revenue saved puts us in a position to have stability and security. And when you start dipping into that, you look at your business and start making some course corrections because you know you're headed the wrong direction. Financial intelligence is critical when you're leading a team at any level. We've actually created a document and I'm gonna share some of the numbers from you. It's in my notes here. We created a document called Financial Intelligence and Benchmarking for Real Estate Agents and Teams. And in this benchmarking system, which I'm gonna give you a copy, if you look right down on the link below, I'm gonna give you a copy, it's a Google Sheet that shows you exactly what to put in all of your numbers and then what the recommended benchmarks are for the different uh, major expenses in your business, such as how much should I be paying on payroll? How much should I be paying on rent and occupancy based on my income? How much should I be paying for my administrative services? How about marketing, training, education, and so forth? All of those things are flat out laid out in the financial intelligence and benchmarking system. So here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. Number one, I want you to go and download the benchmarking system. Fill in the blanks where it gives you the ability to fill in the blanks. There's a tab on the bottom that gives you instructions and then look at where you are and ask yourself these questions. Am I in line or am I way out of line with the financial intelligence that I'm learning about my business? If you're in line, congratulations, you're doing things well. Keep doing what you're doing. If you're way out of line and you feel like you're out of balance and now you have clarity on why and just want some help, then reach out and get a coach. Ask for a, a coaching consultation with one of our financial experts that will help go through and help you make some of the necessary adjustments. Being a team leader comes with a lot of responsibility, including the responsibility to go out and generate revenue, to do money-making activities, but it also comes with the responsibility responsibility to be smart about your money, to create stability and security for the people that you lead. And as you do that, you'll have continued growth, continued profitability, and continued life balance. Good luck with your financial intelligence and enjoy using the financial intelligence worksheet.